Greetings out there, YouTube land from the planet Earth. I was just chilling with Jesus, some tunes, right? I love the ones with the message in them the best, right? And, you know, I was talking with these guys earlier, right? They're nice, right? They responded to my comment, and they could sure, they're, they're asking for prayers, right? I think they could really use some subs. One well, sub to them, as you can see, right? And they, they got uh, a couple of songs on there, not many, but a few on their page, right? And they're really good. If you listen to the words, they're really good, right? And I was talking about the dangers of watch, following these false shepherds and teachers and stuff, right? I ran across one from this guy right here, right? And it wasn't this one right here, but it was one before this, I guess. Right? I looked at them and went like, whoa, man. And I just laid a little bit out for him, you know, because he is so far off following that false teachings, man. You know, it's not an any day thing. You know, think about it. Do a little simple math. How can many perish for their faith in Jesus if they're caught up early, right? How can uh, the, them elect be brought before the Antichrist so the Holy Spirit can do the talking and they can walk out if they're gone early, right? Some people just don't get it, man. That's Satan's game. That's the doctrine of men to fool you. There are even foolish people out there who actually think that other feasts are more important to God than the Feast of Tabernacles. I mean, they, they, they'll believe anything. I mean, honestly, right? They, 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 you name it, they'll, they'll believe anything. And Jesus right there makes a point. Like God makes a point of saying right there in Zechariah 14, verse 16 down. And there's only a couple of verses there. He mentions it three times by name. And it has an or else clause, right? Yet they still want to believe all these other festivals are more important to God because they think so, okay? And he seems like a nice enough fellow there and had his kid with that one. I'm not knocking the guy for that. But man, he, he claims to be a preacher who studied God's word, man. And, and who am I? I'm just a guy who was healed by Jesus the other day with over 12 years past due for the grave terminal illness that was unfixable after they messed me up while I was visiting the States in 2003. I'm fixable to the cold, man, but not to God, right? You know, these lukewarm, they go going to the coal looking for their oil. No wonder they're lost, right? Think about it. When they can top up with free oil from Jesus right there every day, man. I listen to his word. I listen to the audio Bible, right? I put on some uh, music that's got a message, right? Uh, so I can chill to it with Jesus and think on matters and talk with Jesus and think on things that he wants me to reflect on, right? And I love it, right? I was writing about Revelation 7, 9 at a site that I write uh, for Jesus. Song. I've been writing for a few years. Some didn't like it. They called me names for being there. You name it. Well, you can't be of God if you're there. But I tried to say, hey, Jesus wanted me there. They wouldn't listen, right? It's bearing fruit. So I, here I am in a social site that part of it is like Sodom, but there are some believers in there anyway. And, and so I nurtured a little faith, and I've been bringing forth fruit. And I've been getting invites from people to visit their countries and lay hands on them. I've been getting invites from friends I made on that site that are going to tour me around their countries. One of them is in action right now in India, touring it around a little bit himself so they can show me the best spots when they get in there in the whole country. Because he knows I lay hands through Jesus. He knows I minister, and he likes the stuff I write in the videos I make, right? My sister, I hadn't, I hadn't talked to her in about a year and a half. I lost track of her, right? And she's like, no way you're staying in the hotel. You're staying with me, okay? She's got this nice little place. Out in, the, out in the wilderness, man, she may let me borrow, I'm hoping, right? Got a nice little stream, you know, where the waterfall comes down. You got the little pool there. She plants trees and all. She's a really cool lady, right? She's a caregiver. And she's going to show me around all these sites she named and all that. South Wales and all these different sites and stuff she named. I have not a clue what they are. I have to look them up, but what's the point? I'm going to see them with my own eyes. Because Jesus saw fit to show mercy and compassion on me and give me more time when I was supposed to be dead long ago, right? So I can actually talk with authority with the Jesus who loves me, the Jesus who told me things that are to come, right? When I even know parts of my future, I'm rocking and a rolling, right? I don't have to guess, I know. There's a big difference, see? Once you know, and God is really moving your life, and you know there is no going back, period, because you know, right? For, from those God gives more, he expects more, right? For many are called, but few are chosen. Many do things because they think, well, uh, God wants me to do this, I'm going to do this for God, I'm going to do this. They decide what they want to do for God, right? But they forget to ask God, what do you want me to do for you? I made that mistake long ago when I went off mission. I corrected it. And God had me doing some tasks. And I thought it was part of my repentance. I did it. I didn't even know he was setting me up for my future. Because right now, coming as all these invitations and things are coming back from the, what some call it a den of Sodom. And, and even yelled at me and rebuked me for it.
But who do I care about pleasing more, man or God? Well, Jesus that healed me. He had me there before he healed me to see if I would obey because I messed up. I try to tell some people that they wouldn't listen because they were too high on their horse, thinking all that in the bag of potato chips. But God is no respecter of persons, brothers and sisters. I don't care what type you have or how high of a horse you think you are, because my God raises kings up and he tears them down. And to him, you're just the same as everybody else, right? Either you're right with him or not, and you ride the slide. Because many will come up to him and say, didn't I do this and that? And your name is going to go, whoa, I didn't even know you. Okay? Pay attention to your Revelations 3, verses 11 to 18. If you don't want anything stealing your crown, and if you overcome, you're going to have God's name written on you. What more could you want? But it's a simple choice either you want to be with God or not. Because if you don't, you ride the slide. And I highly recommend buying gold from God. You get some eyes out because many of you right there are discriminating and hating each other. When God says to uplift and support and encourage each other, man, you're doing Satan's game. While his side is getting stronger, these guys are tearing each other apart. They're supposed to be brothers and sisters in Christ, right? I was talking about the diversity of our brothers and no discrimination. And I was discriminating against rap music. I admit it. I had to put a C in front of it. I need, and there's all I need to know right there. But I was going to go upload a video that I liked. And I mean, sorry, uh, add a video like, and he just, boom, called me on it. Because right there, so that happening, like it was supposed to, boom, this, this Christian rap video suddenly pops up and it's actually a good one. And I got that message right away because he has a sense of humor with me, which I love, right? Because I got that personal relationship he wants, right? He wants one with you. Like any loving parent wants a relationship, a closer one with a distant child, right? Child's distant right now for the moment, but you know, that prodigal son, right? But the, the parent is hoping they return, and they love them still, right? And they're trying to reach out for them. Still a little time left. But my God is also a God of war, and he's coming down with an army. And you don't want to be here when he gets down. Those caught up are Revelation 7, 9, and came from verse 14, right? And we're a long way from that. When World War One and World War Two weren't great, trust me. My God, don't exaggerate. He's the real deal, right? I'm living proof of it. Over 12 years, passed through the grave, and I'm here, right? Don't follow the false teachings or false shepherds. Like Jesus said, read for yourself because you're really pissed off. Too many of you are being led astray by false doctrines. Reading other books to tell you about the Bible and what God meant. Some of you have no shame. And how can you consider yourself hot when you think other books and other people are better than God's word? When you'd rather follow the doctrines of men over God's word, man. Have you no shame? Oh, ye of little faith, man. Because I was questioning whether I had the faith of a mustard seed or not. With all I've been doing for Jesus and all I've seen and been through in my life. And he liked that I was checking myself. He told me to take him off. And I was wearing over five people worth a day just to live. Now nothing. I took faith. I stood in faith and I obeyed. Either you stand in faith and obey and show God that you want to be with him or not. And you ride this lie. You can lie to yourself all you want, some of you out there. Because God knows you're hot or not. So lukewarm all think they're hot. The seven churches all thought they were hot. The five are clearly not. And the rough math on that one is one third. Two out of five were hot. The rest were not. Think about that. Are you hot in God's eyes or are you lukewarm? Because there's a fine line between lower hot and upper lukewarm. And many are walking that race's edge right now and don't even know it. Better to check now, he's still living. And my wife died June 26th, even though I was healed March 12th. And that was the last thing I expected. And I even know parts of my future. You know? I thought, I never even gave it a second thought. I just thought she would be there. Even though in those parts of the future, it never mentioned her. I just took it for granted. So don't take your future for granted. Make sure where you're going and get rid of Jesus today. Have a chat with Jesus. Bye-bye.